Okay, so this is going to be a video about um, whether or not medical scribing helped move medical school. And that would kind of require you to view the first part of this series, I guess. Um, and that was me while I was a medical scribe before starting medical school, uh, just describing kind of what it was. Um, I think this is important because it'll give you a sense of whether or not you actually want to become a medical scribe. Um, and then, of course, you'll formulate your opinion at the end of this, and I, of course, have my own opinion. So first of all, um, in order to understand this video at all, you have to kind of know how medical school is set up. It's four years. Um, the first two years are didactics, which is like lecture-based uh, material, kind of like probably how your undergrad set up. You're going to lectures and stuff like that. And you'll also have um, different curriculums that might have like uh, some group-based learning stuff. But for the most part, your run-of-the-mill medical school training is going to be uh, lecture-based. Um, that's the first two years. And then the second two years are going to be your clinical years, which are your rotations. So you're actually rotating in a hospital, practicing the uh, medicine that you learned um, during didactics. So in order to describe, you really have to have a large medical vocabulary. I think that's, it's part of the training to become a medical scribe. It's part of the curriculum. And also, I was an emergency medical scribe, which I think a lot of companies are. I think you can also scribe for other specialties. One of my friends is doing ENT, uh, which is kind of crazy, crazy cool. I guess. So I'm going to split this up into five sort of parts. Number one is going to be um, asking the right questions, sort of the HPI. Number two is the physical exam findings that you have to learn. Three is just how the job requires you to be thinking on your feet, be highly receptive to new information. Four is that the job requires you to know how to type a patient note. And five, it requires you to know an EMR. Uh, for example, EPIC, uh, which is sort of the main EMR. So number one is knowing what questions to ask during an HPI. Um, if a patient comes in, for example, with, with like a fever or something, asking them when the fever started, um, how long have you had it, have you actually checked your temperature at home, how high has it been? And then that's a really simple example, but you'll start to get certain chief complaints or the main complaint of a patient's issue, and then knowing what questions to ask, because that is a lot of medicine. Uh, a lot of medicine is storytelling, getting the patient to tell the story and prompting them with the proper questions in order to get them to tell you the right answers um, so that you can create a diagnosis or an idea of a diagnosis which we call a differential diagnosis it's multiple things that it could possibly be so for example with fever it could possibly be an infection or a bacterial infection or probably more likely a viral infection honestly number two your physical exam findings are gonna be awesome like off the charts uh, going into medical school again I was using vocabulary that really none of my other peers who weren't medical scribes were able to use and I was able to describe physical exam findings just like that because you really have to know them as a scribe. For example, heart findings such as regular rate and rhythm, no murmurs auscultated. Uh, these things you just know how to say. And you also know how to do a physical exam because if you're medical scribing in the department, especially this is really specific to the emergency department, you'll be seeing physical exams being done all the time. And in fact, some of the doctors were like, let me use the stethoscopes too. Actually, you know what? I'm not actually supposed to say that at all. Just ignore that. What I should also mention is that during the first two years, you may be required to do patient interviews so that you'll have to interview a patient who has a chief complaint. You'll have to ask the right questions, work it up, get, the, get sort of an idea of what the diagnosis is going to be, do a physical exam, and then you actually have to type the note. I'm going to talk, I'm going to touch on this a little bit more on number four, which is how to type a patient note. But again, going back to the physical exam, and knowing what questions to ask, you're gonna be way ahead of the curve during your first two years if you do, if you become a medical scribe before medical school, if you're gonna obviously be working as a medical scribe for more than like a month or so. Uh, I was a medical scribe for a year. I did undergrad and then I took a gap year in order to travel and work. So that's my story. Number three, um, I think this might be, I don't know, case by case. Being a medical scribe really requires you to process new information really quickly and the ability to convert medical jargon into a patient document. And I think that is one of the most challenging things about becoming a, a scribe, because when you go to medical school, you really are learning a whole new vocabulary. And it's gonna be pretty daunting, but if you were a medical scribe, you would have already learned maybe at least 70% of the, of the vocab that you would have to know. Now, I'm not saying that you need to be super agile and thinking on your feet and be able to recept information and know it right away in order to do medical school, that's totally not what I'm saying. I'm just saying in order to be a medical scribe, that's really one of the traits that they're looking for. And I think that translates really well to medical school. 
This is kind of where I kind of want to just do a 3.5 maybe and talk about becoming an EMT. I was not an EMT. I know a lot of my friends were and I've seen a lot of EMTs um, on the field and working with them. And I think it's also great because I think it's really hands-on. Being a scribe is not as hands-on. It's a little bit more cerebral in nature, whereas EMT, um, you really have a lot more patient contact and um, contact with people on the field. You also get to learn a lot of terminology, but I think it may be different in the sense that there isn't as much pathology and as much physical exam findings versus becoming a medical scribe, whereas you really have to know all of those things cold. And then you also may not learn the EPIC EMR system, which is, I think, number five in this video. But I think being an EMT is also excellent. In fact, I know some people who are an EMT and a medical scribe, if you have time for that. I don't know. Okay, number four is how to type a patient note. And I kind of like touched on this before. I was way ahead of the curve in terms of typing patient notes and their organizations. And by that, I mean like knowing what SOAP is. And that's subjective, objective assessment and plan. Knowing what goes into each category, what type of information, and then being able to type that note really fast at the end of a patient encounter. This isn't really about speed, but it's about information and, and knowing that organization. And because it really sticks with you when you're typing tons of medical charts, being a medical scribe. Do I think number four is super important? No, because that's something you will learn. I definitely think number one is number one, and that's why I put it up there. And then I think number two and number three are very close second and thirds. Number five, I think, may be the least important, but still important, and it's how to use an EMR, or how to navigate an electronic medical record software, I should say, because that's gonna be really important during your third and fourth year, when you have to actually type patient's notes and actual notes on the computer. And while not all systems may use the same EMR software that your medical scribing company may have you learning, such as Epic, um, but that is honestly used nationwide. But I think it's a great skill set to have. So overall, I would say being a medical scribe had, did help me significantly in medical school. I think I would not have been able to, me personally, I would not have been able to learn all the vocabulary jumping right into medical school. I definitely needed that exposure to the field prior to starting. But the majority of medical students who start school don't, aren't, weren't scribes, so I can't really say that it's necessary. I just think it's a great addition and really it was pretty wholesome to my experience of medical school because I really was ahead of the curve and that gave me time to learn other things and learn pathologies and treatments and anatomy rather, rather than having to learn certain vocabulary words such as dorsal and ventral aspect or, or caudal encephalad. Um, those kinds of things. And those are just anatomical examples. There's a lot of other examples I could give you. And then also going back to becoming an ENT, I also think that's excellent work to do before medical school as well. I don't have that personal experience, so I think maybe watching someone else's ex a video explaining their experience of that might be important. But I do know excellent medical students that I went to school with who were ENTs, and um, they're doing well. So that's my video. Hope that kind of helped. Again, you can watch the video that I did before this a couple years ago before I actually started medical school while I was a scribe. And I think that might help you um, decide whether or not you want to become a scribe and if it's going to help you. Okay, so I actually want to add a number six. Um, and I think this might actually trump everything and be the most important thing. But it was having the bigger picture of medicine. And in fact, um, you learn so much from just being in the environment and being in the ER or whether or not you're scribing in another uh, specialty and just being immersed in medicine. I think that might be honestly the most amazing thing. And also having the exposure to, be, to being next to physicians and getting letters from them, to be honest, and asking their experience and their opinion of the field um, and formulating your own opinion and what kind of field, what the field you want to go into. So, all right, thank you.